Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you on this Labor Day Sunday. This is what I call a tippy canoe, is that what it's on this side? <laughs> but I'm glad you're all here on this Labor Day Sunday. Uh, the announcements are on the back of your bulletin, and we do have uh, some, a lot of things coming up. Next Sunday is Rally Day, so that means the beginning of Sunday school, and we'll have a special worship service with uh, an interesting conclusion to the morning, so I hope you can all be here for that. <laughs> yeah, I was, why was it dinging? <laughs> so I heard something. Um, and then the finance committee after worship next Sunday. Then there's a roast beef supper coming up. And then on the 15th, um, the district superintendent, we have a different one for this one year only, for now anyway. Uh, his name is Taesung, like Samsung, only Taesung Kang. And we are to meet with him at the SPRC meeting at 3 o'clock on the 15th in Portsmouth at the Methodist Church there. So if you're on that committee, please keep that date in mind. And then um, we have a fair meeting on the 22nd. Are there joys and concerns this morning? Yes. Continue for his last house. He is in Florida right now. And her name is Helen Estabrook. Okay. Sharon? Still keep an eye on Brother's friend in prayer because he had the cancer, some of it removed out of his head. But then they can't take it all. And then they also found out he has a clogged artery to his heart. Do you know his first name? Gary. Gary. Sure. Susan? Courtney. Um, she has managed again to fracture part of her foot. Um, and this has been going on. She's had, this is probably the seventh time her feet have been broken up fractured in the last 11 years. Oh, wow. So there's just, something going on in there that so just yeah. crazy to find it. And her, is her last name Malinsky too? It is. All right. Gail? The people of Texas were shooting last night. Yes. And a former co-worker, Holly, dealing with some health issues. Okay. And the loss is for now. And I think we need to remember the people in the path of Hurricane Dory, too. Are there any joys this morning? Oh, another concern. What's his name? Larry. Okay. Now, let's have some good news. Anybody get promoted, have a birthday, an anniversary, a trip? Good news for anybody. <laughs> August 21st, birthday. August 21st, coming up. It was. Gone. It was. <laughs> Gone. Gone. <laughs> yes. School's back in session. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really a hooray? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sharon? I need you to have a birthday. Oh, God. You had something. <laughs> Right, it was Eileen's birthday. So I have to say, my mother had a birthday. Yeah. Was it? I, my son had a birthday. Huh? I had one the next day. My mother had one two days one later. Day. My grandson had one three days later. We are an August birthday family. I guess so. so and Victor's birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all partying out. I told him I wasn't doing anything. My birthday is 16. Oh, oh the 16th, yeah. Chuck? Yeah. <laughs> my daughter is 16. Oh, my daughter is 16. I am 12. Yeah. Okay. Oh, your dad is the 16th. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I think we should sing Happy Birthday, and instead of putting all the names in, sing God bless you right there. Yeah. Let's just sing Happy Birthday to all these people, okay? Happy Birthday. <laughs> All very many more happy birthdays. 
Well, if there's nothing further, we yeah. will begin yeah. our worship with a hymn. It's, oh, Charles. Just a reminder that the sign up sheet for the, if you're interested in helping, is down by the calendar in the fellowship hall. Okay, sign up for the roast beef supper in the fellowship hall. All right, let's begin with a song, a new song called Come In, Come In and Sit Down. It's on the wall. Um, maybe we should have you play the chorus and the verse through once so we get the tune in our mind, and then we'll sing it. Vacant street. God calls you, and God calls me. 
God's voice may rumble like the last jet circling a sleeping city. God has invited us all, rich and poor, sick and healthy, happy and sad. God has spoken, and the world waits for the response. God calls you. Uh, Here we come, God. Let us come close to you. Let us pray. We rejoice and offer our praise to you, O God. We give thanks to you because your word gives us hope. As we open our hearts to you this day, may our spirits be refreshed in your presence. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 1 to 8 and 15 through 16. The introduction to the reading goes like this. For Christians, ethical behavior is always rooted in faith. The dietary rules omitted from this reading make obvious is reference to the strict Levitical code given to Moses during the Israelites 40 years in the wilderness. The community to which this letter was written may well have been predominantly Jewish, struggling with the freedom of their new faith in Jesus of Nazareth, the true Messiah. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, and those who are being tortured as though you yourself was being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say this with confidence. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. May God bless this reading from the letters of Hebrews.
unconditional love. Do you know what that means? We may, we may not agree with your behavior, but it doesn't mean we love you any less. Right? That's a big one for parents, is to love you unconditionally. And it's really not that hard. At least I didn't think it was. But there's other people out there, too, that we need to love. Who do you think that might be? Oh, we always have to love a big sister. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I thought maybe let's talk about people that maybe don't come to church, or maybe people um, who have broken the law, um, maybe people who aren't really kind. Okay. Do we still need to love them? We do. And we need to pray for them, and we need to hope that somehow they will find their way to do you know someone like that? That's not always very nice. Maybe hurts your feelings. Huh? Never says they're sorry. <laughs> what are you giggling about? It? <laughs> so we have to. So we have to love all those people that maybe aren't easy to love. And even though that they might not be a relative, they might not be a friend, they might not even be anyone that we know, we, we still have to we still have to do that, don't we? Because that's what God really wants from us, is to love everyone the way we love ourselves. Right? And that's part of what we're going to be hearing in the sermon this morning, is love, talking about unconditional love. Thank you for coming up, and I hope you. Tuesday is it? This is Gary. You are already back right? I'm thrilled to be back, yes. Yeah, so you had a couple more days. This is Gary. Tuesday. 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 And you're Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll think about it. I hope that you have a really good day. <laughs> okay, thank you for coming down. Thank you, Eileen. Let us join in singing More Love to Thee, number 453.
gospel reading. Get my papers here together. The introduction to the reading. Jesus had been invited to the home of a leading Pharisee for the Sabbath meal. And then, in a part of the scripture that we don't hear this morning, he nearly broke up the party by healing a man afflicted with dropsy or edema, extensive retention of fluids. To add to that offense, he gave the other guests a scolding that certainly must have shamed some of them, if not all of them. Then he turned on his host and gave him a further lecture about whom he ought to have invited to dinner. So the reading. On one occasion, Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath. They were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests had chosen the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place, and then in disgrace you would, be, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and, all who, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they might invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. <coughs> and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will re be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. I want you to all do something uh, unexpected and perhaps a bit uncomfortable for you. I want you to change seats, and I noticed that the Paneer family has already changed seats, but I want you to move around to a place where you have never or rarely ever sat. So if you're on this side, sit over there, if you're on this side, sit over there, or in the front, come to the back, and back to the front, just switch up. Children and elders, middlers and teens, singles and doubles, and in-betweens. <laughs> Strong 85ers and streetwise 16s, for we are a part of the family. Greeters and shoppers, long time and new, nobody here has a claim on a few. 
That's why we change seats. And whether we're many or whether we're few, we are a part of the family. So nobody here has a claim on the pew. That's the theme of today's gospel reading. Today we read that Jesus was invited to a meal at the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees. Scripture says that the Pharisees were watching Jesus closely. They wanted to keep an eye and an ear on him. What they didn't realize that Jesus was also watching them. Then he finally speaks and turns all their traditions upside down. There's a story told about one of those blistering hot days like we had last summer. The house was full of guests and things weren't going too well. And finally, the hostess got everyone seated for dinner and asked her seven-year-old daughter to say grace. But mother, said the little girl, I don't know what to say. Oh, yes you do, said the mother. Just say the last prayer you had heard me pray. Obediently, the little girl bowed her head and prayed rather hesitantly, Oh Lord, why in the world did I invite all these people on such a hot day? <laughs> After hearing what Jesus had to say, I imagine the Pharisees in our gospel reading had to be thinking somewhat like that little girl's mother. Why in the world did I invite this guy? From previous experience, this Pharisee should have realized that if Jesus was present, there's surely going to be conflict. In that culture, you see, everybody knew their place in society and were seated at the table according to their importance. And I wonder if Jesus sat there with an amused grin on his face as he watched the people jockeying for an honored position at the table. Listen to what the message translates these verses. Uh, Eugene Peterson's translation of the message. When you're invited to dinner, go and sit at the last place. Then when the host comes, he may very well say, friend, come up to the front. That will give all the dinner guests something to talk about. What I'm saying is, if you walk around with your nose in the air, you're going to end up flat on your face. But if you're content to simply be yourself, you will become more than yourself. That's the reading from the message. Jesus calls us to be content with ourselves, as we heard in the uh, epistle reading. A secure person carries his or her status with them. So when Jesus says that everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted, he is giving us a glimpse into human behavior. People who are always seeking after status have something lacking in their lives. Our culture encourages this attitude. Advertisements imply that if we are lacking something, we should use their product because we are worth it or we deserve it. We are constantly bombarded with the message, go for it, to fulfill ourselves so that we can be whole and healthy human beings. Yet Jesus calls us to take on a different set of standards from those offered by the secular world. We are to ignore the way this world operates and recognize that God's love is equally applicable to all people, rich and poor, prominent and marginal. Jesus calls us to put aside our pride and open ourselves to humility. Humility is one of those strange virtues that is very hard to put actively into place. Humility can even be a form of pride. Like the person who said, I'm, I'm humble and proud of it. Humility is not something you can determine to become so much as that it is something that, by the grace of God, comes upon you when you are open to the spirit of unconditional love or agape, uh, sacrificial love the love we experience through Jesus Christ. Some call it the spirit of self-forgetfulness. As Norman Vincent Peale once said, humble people don't think less of themselves. They just think about themselves less. And I understand that Alcoholics Anonymous has adopted these words. Humility is not thinking of yourself less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. 
But this sermon today is not just about humility and thinking about ourselves and about others more. It is also about hospitality, how we treat and welcome others into this house of God. Humble hospitality means to forget about yourself and make everyone feel welcome. <clears throat> Who are we thinking of when we come to this house of God? And who are we inviting to come with us? Or who are we excluding? A few years ago, there was a little girl with an ear infection in, in Bakersfield. I don't know what state or what town, country this was in even. Her parents brought her to the doctor's office that her insurance company told her to go to. They were shocked to discover that the doctor wouldn't treat their little girl because the little girl's parents had tattoos. Outside the front door of the office was a list of the things that people couldn't have. They couldn't have tattoos, piercings, and many other requirements, or they wouldn't get treated. And the name of that doctor's office? Christian Medical Services. The doctor said that he was just trying to create a Christian atmosphere for his patients. Christian atmosphere? What was that doctor thinking? My friends, we need to look at ourselves. Many churches have that same list outside of their church, but while I don't think that con this congregation feels that way, I mean, it's a, uh, an understood list, I should say. Some of those, I'm saying that you don't feel that way in here, but some of those outside of the church may feel that way that they are not good enough to enter our worship. This is a real problem for churches and a real perception that people have. So many people think that they have to have everything together out there, outside their church walls, before they can come to church or even come back to church. They may believe that you have to look right or act right, talk right, and act like everything is okay. Life is wonderful. And if you don't fit that list, they may think you can't be part of what's going on inside. Well, that's backwards, people. We know that we don't have it all together. And that's why we need to be in here. Someone once said there are two types of people in this world. Those who enter a room and say, well, here I am. And those who come in and say, ah, there you are. Jesus teaches us as individuals and as a church to look for the least in our communities and say, ah, there you are. He tells us to reach out to the outcasts in our world. We should not seek to rub shoulders with those who cannot repay us or with those who can repay us with business and position and patronage. We should reach out to those who are unable to repay us in any way. Churches do not need to reach out to the needy just so that maybe they will join the church someday. I'll say this, that's not why we have our clothes closets or hold a table of plenty here. We have those events because we want to serve the community. Maybe they'll come here, maybe they're not, but that's okay. We do not invite people to join the church or come to the clothes closet or, or come to the table of plenty so they'll come upstairs to pledge and worship with us. We reach out to the needy because God loves them and they need help. We invite people to church because they need a vital relationship with God and a supportive church family. We reach out in love because Jesus first reached out to us. Humble hospitality is a core value for Jesus and his church. There was a minister who had a favorite slogan that he often repeated in his sermons. He said, the church is not like a country club. It's more like a hospital for sinners. We are all broken imperfect people. And that is why we need to come here on Sunday mornings. In God's eyes, we are all equally needy. 
None of us will ever be good enough to expect that the presence of God belongs to us. It's because of the grace of God that we belong to God. And that's why Jesus said, do not invite your friends or your rich neighbors. Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. You and I are not in the church to impress one another or to win power struggles. We are here to minister to one another in our weaknesses. We are here to be hospitable as one sinner to another. We need Jesus. We need to be connected to his community. In fact, the Christian atmosphere really is a place where people can be real with God and themselves. A place where people who don't know God are invited to experience this community that we call a church, the family of God, and know the love and grace and welcome of Jesus. There is nothing more Jesus-like or Christian-like than to love our neighbors and to welcome them in Jesus' name. So who are we thinking of when we come to this house of God? Are we thinking mainly about ourselves and what we can receive here today? Is it only our Savior, Jesus Christ? It is only our Savior, Jesus Christ, who can give life its fullness. That's in my heart and most surely is in yours, or you wouldn't be here today. You can give up your usual seat to someone who is part of the family to God, to someone like you who is in need of rest and help, to someone like you who needs to let go of the burdens that are crushing and the yoke that is hard, and to take upon themselves the yoke of Christ, the yoke that is easy and the burden that is small. As we look around, we know there are empty places among us today. Places that will only be filled if you allow God to issue an invitation through you to those who, like you, are in need. Homecoming Sunday, Brownie Sunday, is next week. And I invite you to invite someone to church. Someone maybe that used to go here that doesn't anymore, someone who doesn't go anywhere else. Could be a friend, a neighbor, a relative, or someone that you're acquainted with. I ask you today not to think less of yourselves. You are, after all, part of the family of God, and Christ has given his life for you. Rather, think of yourselves less. And always remember there are two types of people in this world. Those who enter a room and say, well, here I am. And those who come in and say, ah, there you are. The table is set before us today. And it's a reminder of why we are asked to behave in this way. This table reminds us that Jesus was not born in a palace, but a humble stable. He did not choose the priesthood, but carpentry as his profession. He did not choose world leaders, but world losers, ordinary fishermen and tax collectors, to develop his plan. He did not choose a throne, but a cross from which he gave his life for all. So what is your choice? The places of honor at this table are not open. In fact, they don't even really exist. There are seats open to every poor sinner and unrighteous cripple willing to humble themselves before their host, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord. So when the invitation comes to the table, come and receive the life that is to be found in the humble life that Jesus gives to all who would receive it. Amen. And since today is Labor Day, I'm going to share a poem with you that 
my colleague Steve Garner Holmes wrote as a devotion this week. God bless those who labor, and especially those who labor so we may take a Labor Day vacation. Grant your grace to those whose labor costs them, whose labors degrade or wound or endanger them, body and soul. Bless those who pick our fruit and pack our meat, who clean our rooms, tend our gardens, gather our waste, and care for our aging, underpaid and unprotected. Be with those who risk to advocate and organize and unionize those who labor for our sake. Sustain those who labor unhappily and those whose labors would be better spent with their children. We especially pray for those who labor under threat or force, who are not paid and are not free. May all who labor be granted Sabbath and know their worth apart from labor. In gratitude for your labors, O oh God, we give thanks for those who join you in creating this world that all our labors may create and not destroy, bless and not abuse, and yield beauty and joy for the sake of the wholeness of all creation. Amen. And now will the ushers please come forward for the morning offering.
for the great thanksgiving found on page 13 but I will be inserting extra words in appropriate places. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, it is right to give thanks and praise. It is a good and fruitful work to give thanks to you, Almighty God, in all times and at all places and in all our tasks, in our cars, our homes, our offices, our fields and our kitchens, at our tables, our desks, our telephones and computers, when we are resting or waiting, laboring or supervising, following or leading. All these we do with all your people now on earth and the multitude of heaven praising your name and joining their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and holy is your work among us in Jesus Christ, who came to be born in the home of a carpenter, a trade he learned and practiced, a laborer in our midst. He called out fishermen and activists. He healed the servant of a soldier. He received the support of resourceful women. He delegated his ministry to his disciples, empowered all his followers, to do his divine work in the world. By his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the bondage of sin and the power of death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, all of you, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for all of you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. And so, as baptized and commissioned people, remembering your mighty work in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves, our daily lives, and our unique locations for ministry in the world, homes and hospitals, parks and stores, prisons and concert halls, as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of the bread and the wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and 
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake in the body and the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. All of you are welcome at God's table. So I invite you to come forward as the ushers direct. And Eileen and I will serve.
pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, number 557, and projected on the wall.